Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman, and over there is John Lewandowski. <sighs> Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Hard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They do jersey customizations. They have all the hockey gear you need if you just want to zoom in a little bit up there and They'll tell you all the brands that they sell. They also have referee gear, uh, except for they can't make you as bad of a referee as we saw tonight. We'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> um, also, uh, they do skate sharpening the old-fashioned way, still uh, do the motions by hand. They don't let a machine do it. They trust in themselves. Milos is the uh, uh, main guy there. He will take good care of you. Much love, Milos. Anyway, today, as you can see my gear, the Nashville Predators took on the Detroit Red Wings. They're playing almost as bad as the Lions. Mm -hmm. They kind of remind they're played and it reminded me of Ndamukong Sue. Uh, right? Oof. Cheap shot. Dirty all night, man. I got to give a lot of composure to Nashville, though, and compliments. They, they instead of taking it out on them, they, they, they put up their hits, but they stayed clean, and what a great game in the end. Yeah, all right. So stats, with, with that being said, it's not going to really show that, but I'll explain once we're done with the stats on why they are the way they are. Uh, shots were 32-26. Uh, Nashville uh, faceoff was uh, 73% to 28. Nashville. <laughs> Ouch. Domination in the faceoff circle. Again. Yep. Uh, both teams were over on the power play, but I can't really expect Nashville to do much when, I mean, I'll get into that in a minute too. Uh, but uh, Nashville was 0 for 1, Detroit was 0 for 2. Pally minutes were 23 for Nashville, 11 for Detroit. Like I said, I'll get into it in a minute. He said it was a clean game, but I'll get into it in a minute. Uh, hits were 13 to, to 10. In the second period in, in, in the intermission, I called John and told that him that Nashville had 12 blocks already. <laughs> you know. um, total blocks were 14 for Nashville, 5 for the Red Wings. Um, giveaways were three to four. If you want to go by the low number, being in favor of Nashville. Well, uh, they've been doing a lot better these last couple games with the number of giveaways being down quite right, a bit. Let's, let's get, there's two particular things I want to get into here. So please give me a second while I do this. I just wanted to show off this real quick. Uh, but anyway, two things. One, Mark Stahl's tripping and Yakov Trenin's embellishment. <laughs> to my personal recollection, when you go and hook a guy that should have been hooking, not tripping, and therefore would have been no embellishment. Right. Called tripping, just so you could give the embellishment. Because Trenin didn't really fall. No, he didn't. So it was kind of like, what? You're calling that? Huh? And and kudos to Chris Mason for keeping it, like, as far as the TV part goes for the Nashville side, um, you know, trying to keep it uh, honest and, and unbiased even towards the refs. So, yeah. Because I couldn't have done it. I'd have been swearing. <laughs> All righty, but let's get into the Adam Ernie situation. Adam Ernie boarded, boarded Matt Benning. Matthew Olivier decided, well, yeah, we don't need any more defensemen hurt. I've had it with this. Boom. And that's kind of what you want to see from him at that level. But what ended up happening after that was com 
complete and utter, and this does not reflect my sponsorship nor my coverage of these two teams. This is not their thoughts, the Admiral's thoughts, or the Florida Everglades, but it was bullshit. You call a bench miner for the coach. You call instigating on Olivier, fighting, and a, and a 10-minute misconduct. All and they the reviewed all of this, and that's what they came out with. It was very confusing. And then, not only that, but you got guys like Danny DeKaiser sitting there cross-checking guys. Uh, Cousins got cross-checked into the bench, and then they started beating on him in the bench. No call for that one in the second period. No. Nope. Um, uh, it, it was just a very sloppy ref game. I can understand for something for wanting to keep it close, but at the time that all this happened, it was a two-one game. Right. It's kind of pointless. But let's get into the the scoreboard because that's where it gets fun. Well, plus, with the amount of injuries, the not just the Predators are facing, but any team when a when a play a boarding play like that happens, there's there's no excuse. I mean, so, there's no excuse for that type of play. So I'm going to say this right now. NHL uh, player safety. I follow you on Twitter. I better see something tomorrow. Even if you're just saying we're, we reviewed it and we're finding him, I'm okay with that. At least you did something. But he boarded him head first into the dasher. Not yeah, you him. saw the knack. You know, it, it was not pretty. Yeah, he grabbed him by the head and pretty much slammed him into it. But let's get into the scoring. I don't want to dwell. I want to be no, happy. No, no. Let, let's be happy, man. It's, it's, it's a great night for hockey. All right. Scoring in the first, a goose egg. <laughs> <laughs> scoring in the second, uh, scoring first goal of the game for them was Darren Helm. Darren Helm's been kind of a journeyman for, for, De for Detroit. A lot of time going like this between he, between them and Grand Rapids. But he scored his third with an assist by Troy Stecker and Adam Ernie. Ernie is definitely on my crap list. If I could have jumped through the TV, I probably would have. <laughs> but let's get into the, the fun part here because pretty much from here on out, you're just going to hear me say, goal. <laughs> All right, scoring is sixth of the season for the Nashville Predators. Vic Arvidsson. Arvidsson, sixth goal of the year at the 228 mark of the second with an assist from Nick Cousins, his eighth, and uh, Matias Ekholm is 11. All right, now remember, RV just came off injury, so hear me when I say this. Can Whenever a guy hits a cold streak, can we just like hit him over the head with a frying pan? Because it just seems to work. Oh, we get injured, you're out for a couple games. Okay, I'll come back and I'll, I'll score like 20 team goals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, then scoring was Eric Holla. Eric Holla was his fourth of the year with an assist from Grimaldi. That was a beautiful backhand top shelf. Yes, it was. Um, You're going to hear a lot of that, too. <laughs> uh, then scoring was Nick Cousins. Nick Cousins, backhand, low glove. Uh, that was his fourth with an assist from Colton Sissons and Eric Holla. All right. No, there's something I'm going to get into in a second, and this is something that you don't see often in a shortened season, but let me get into it. Now we're on to the third period. Third period, Mikel Bronlin with his 10th with an assist from Ben Harper, his fourth, and Mikel Bronlin, nope, sorry, Mikel Bronlin scored the goal, Matias Eckholm, <laughs> Matias Eckholm with his 12th. <laughs> Uh, then we have Victor Arvidsson with his seventh with an assist from Tyler Lewington. Way to go, kid. You get your first game in a Preds jersey and you get an assist. Way to go, Tyler. Good job, man. Um, uh, then scoring on a penalty shot on a filthy goal. That was just mean and unfair. Uh, was Victor Arvidsson with the <laughs> hat trick. So, RV with the hat trick. RV Hustle is back. I want to know where all the Arvidsson haters are. Please hit the comments. Tell me he still deserves to be traded with trying to, with uh with with Forsberg, Duchesne, and Tolden and out your top point getters. Um, RV stepped back into the limelight and went, "Oh yeah, you guys forgot I was here." 
So, yeah, and, and then, not only that, the yak, the, the Russian man himself, we used to call him the machine here in Milwaukee, Yakov mm-hmm. Trenin. Yakov Trenin is a workhorse. He will give you a full 60 minutes every game. Yeah. And Trenin with his third goal of the year with an assist from Colton Sissons and Ben Harper. Your three stars of the game are probably going to be no surprise to anybody here. Nick Cousins, Ben Harper, Victor Arvidsson. Harper had two assists and a plus three with one shot on goal. 16 minutes of ice time, or 16 and a half. Uh, Cousins had a goal and an assist and RV with the hat trick. Good night, well-rounded, all-around point production. But there's something I want to talk about in the face-off dot, okay? Let's talk to face-off dot. Johansson, 80%. Granlin, 86%. Yarncrock, 100%. Sisson, 64%. Halla, 60%. That's just the face-off circle. Yep. Uh, Ben Harper did have one giveaway. Uh, Eric Halla had a giveaway, and Luke Coonan had a giveaway. But I mean, I'm not gonna complain tonight. Uh, Takeaway: Whoo! Matt Benning had one, and that was it. The rest of the giveaways were bad turnovers. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of kudos to Arvidsson, two blocks. Lewington, Benning, two blocks. Ekholm, a block. Ferentz, your first pro game, you had a hit, a block, and a shot on goal, and a plus one. Yeah. Good production tonight. And and and, and I'll get into Ferentz in a second with the number he's wearing because – a lot of admirals and longtime Predator fans are going to completely agree with me on this. But I'll get there in a second. I also want to get to the goalies real quick. Uh, goaltenders were used to, goaltender in depth tonight was Yusisaros. We like things big and juicy around here. And he mm-hmm. didn't give up many. Uh, he, he had uh, 25 saves on 26 shots with a .962 save percentage. In that for Detroit was Jonathan Bernier. Bernier gave up 25, had 25 saves on 32 shots with a 0.781 save percentage. Bernier, if I was you after the second period, uh, after the second period, or at least, let me, let me recheck my goal scoring stats here. Yeah, at least by the 10 minute mark where you're down. Five, could you at least give me a 10 minute break and put the backup in? Right. You know, I'd have been mad. I'd have been mad as a goalie. Yeah. Uh, it's not often you see the starting goal minder in there in a seven to one game the whole game. All right. Your your Tim Peel sympathizers, aka referees, are Brian Pochmar and TJ Locktomore. Your linesmen, I don't make fun of linesmen at all. I never get on them. They barely make mistakes. They make one every now and again, but it's rare. Referees, more common. Um, your linesmen were Pierre Ricotte and Tyson Baker. Head coach for Nashville was John Hines. Hines got a two-minute unsportsmanlike conduct and got warned, if any more from you, you will be ejected from the game. Um. Head coach for Detroit for now is Jeff Blashill. I don't think he's going to be coach after this season. <laughs> I don't either. All right, scratches for Nashville were Phil Forsberg, Ellie Tolvin, and Dante Fabro. Uh, Forsberg due back any day now. Tolvin, I believe it was either fatigue or probably had some nagger, nag, nagging nagging injury Ooh, uh i shouldn't use like locker room etiquette i shouldn't use like locker room ta- talk here because that's 
like the N word, neg, er, sounds familiar to a different word that I don't want no part of. Um, we use that word in a locker room, nag, or like kind of a person like nags you, you know, they're known as a nag, a person that nags a lot. Anyway, um, that's what we call an injury, a nag, or it's a nagging injury that won't go away, but you can still play with it. It's, it might be one of those situations where he had one and maybe it was just a day to give him rest to try and get it to go back to where he could play with it again. Right. Fabro, we know he's hurt and I know he may be week to week at the current moment. Uh, scratches for Detroit were Alex Viega and Patrick Nemeth. Um, nobody in that lineup could have helped tonight. Um, <laughs> if I wanted to spotlight a low point for them, would be their D line of Merrill and Christian Jutes. Uh, they were a minus three. Uh, Sam Gagne was a minus three. Uh, Giovanni Smith was a minus three. Uh, Svechnikov, Rasmussen, uh, they were minus twos. Tilfala and Larkin was a minus two. Namstikov was a minus two. Everybody on the roster except for Adam Ernie, Glenn Denning, and Helm were minus. Not a good night. I mean, when you got three guys in your old lineup that are minus, you're not going to have a good night. All right, so with that being said, we've got upcoming tomorrow is the Florida Everblades at Jacksonville Iceman, 6 o'clock Central Time. I believe, John, you'll be here. Yeah, should be. Hopefully. Because <laughs> it's, it's hard listening to these games on the radio, trust me. <laughs> All righty. Um, otherwise, the old guys will be seeing him, well, next to me somewhere on <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. But uh, for from Milwaukee to Nashville, um, our, our wonderful sponsor, Hockey Locker. Also, please don't forget to like and follow on Facebook and hit that uh, subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified every time we upload a video. It's been a long day for me. It's been a lot of hockey today <laughs> and a stressful game because at one point I wanted to jump through the TV. Like I said, I will. T we will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.